Coming up on the Northwestern News Report, Evan Stonian's mourning loved ones lost to COVID-19. Plus, rumors and false reports, hiccups in Northwestern's new anonymous COVID reporting system. And we find out the best way to bundle up for a bone-chilling Evanston winter. Those stories and more coming up on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right, right now. now. Good evening and welcome to the Northwestern News Report. I'm Simone Scott. And I'm Chloe Cope. Even as millions across the country get their COVID vaccinations, the CDC says there have been 650,000 cases this past week. So let's begin tonight with a COVID update for Northwestern from NU's Health Department. And it ends Julie Richardson reports. This week, a slight rise in undergraduate COVID cases on campus. As of February 14th, 34 new positives were recorded. And now, Northwestern's health department is optimistic. Northwestern University has a, a very effective, at least it appears to be so, uh, program. Executive Director of Health Service Robert Palinkas says he is grateful to students for complying with protocol. And for the most part, it appears they are following uh, the general uh, rules. So we are quite pleased. Despite overall success, Chief Risk and Compliance Officer Luke Figora says there have been a few bumps in the road. Some social kind of gathering type stuff. And then I think, you know, the, there were some concerns raised about, well, how many people is safe in the dining hall and is there enough space and things like that. Figora also says he isn't worried about the prospect of false COVID test results. The tests that we're using are highly sensitive and, spe um, and specific. We don't have any reason to think that there kind of were false positives. Although Northwestern most likely won't see much normalcy for the remainder of this school year, the health department thinks students can expect some semblance of it in the fall. Come summer, I think we'll begin to see uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So I think people are going to need to be patient. Northwestern's kind of been uh, working through the approval to be an approved vaccination site so that once uh, the vaccine supply is more readily available, we can start to work through that and help, you know, our partners in the city of Evanston, city of Chicago, kind of on, you know, working towards the Northwestern community. Northwestern working towards a healthy future. Julia Richardson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Julia. In the meantime, the Northwestern Health Department hopes to help educate community members who are hesitant about getting the vaccine. Vaccine distribution began in December, yet we're only on phase 1B. The road to immunity is long, and the roadblocks to getting a vaccine aren't helping. Two months since the start of vaccine distribution, Dr. Quincy Johnson receiving his second dose of the shot. Getting frontline workers inoculated is important, but at this point, limited appointments unclear communication, and a shortage of the vaccine make getting the shot a challenge. The irony is I've talked to a number of other people who've had the same problem. There, it, it will say um, sign up. When you go online though, when you look, when you go to the website to check, it will say there's nothing available. My sincere hope is that it will be equally distributed around the country. Dr. Johnson hopes everyone will get the vaccine as soon as they can. With the looming danger of new COVID variants, he says this is essential to our safety. More than one year since the first COVID case in Chicago, Evanstonians commemorate lives lost and adapt to a new lifestyle. And it ends Hannah Jiang brings us this story. Cynthia Ferenga's mom, Dolores R. Ferenga, died in October due to COVID-19. They shared their last moments over a nurse's phone. She called back and said, I think your mom has about 10 minutes. And she held the phone to my mom's ear for her last minutes. My mom was, she didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, talking and crying. Faringa's sadness is shared. The city of Evanston records almost 4,000 total cases and 110 deaths since the start of the pandemic. Because it just wasn't necessary. That's just what kills me. These deaths, some of them were inevitable but a lot of them weren't. Ferenga wants permanent memorial for local victims. She found hashtag COVID break hearts, a decal you can put on your window and share on social media. So that people who see it would reflect on how it came to this. How did it get to be this point? Many responding with support under her Facebook post. 
somebody will post that they're struggling with something and they need help and people really really do provide the help Patty Woodmere says she now checks on her neighbors over phone calls. Now I have a real relationship with these people, even though I have never met any of them. Columns of light in the sky honoring Evanston residents who passed away due to COVID-19. Hannah Jiang, Northwestern News Network. Heartbreaking story. Thanks, Hannah. A new anonymous COVID-19 community concern report is available to students and some controversies regarding false reports are already brewing. NNN's Diego Ramos has more. With a positivity rate of only 0.39% and more than 130,000 tests administered, Northwestern is taking precautions when it comes to the pandemic. Yeah, well, first I want to say to undergrad students, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. And to be extra cautious, students can now submit anonymous reports to the Office of Community Standards. You can go to, we have a website called NU Health. A link to something called Share a Concern is the, is the name of the report. Admin hopes community reports will ensure students adhere to pandemic guidelines. But when used haphazardly, they could have detrimental effects on students who are mistakenly reported. It started with a tweet that, once shared in the Class of 24's group me chat, revealed rumors of a freshman who had allegedly paid another student to take their COVID test for them, hoping it'd be able to conceal a positive test result. It was, they, it's literally just panicked students, I guess. Davis believes that tweet was referring to her. She says the report is nothing more than a rumor. Because I, at the beginning of this, I said I got a false negative rapid test at home, which I obviously paid to have that test because you pay to have a rapid test at home. So this person, as words get construed, must have thought that I paid for a false negative test here. When Davis tested at home, her initial results came back positive. She got sent to Foster Walker for isolation. Despite no longer feeling any COVID-like symptoms, Northwestern isn't allowing Davis to test until 90 days have passed. This is because some that test positive, but are negative at the time of retesting, might test positive once again, despite no longer hosting the virus. The report filed against Davis, which claimed she had paid someone to take her COVID test for her, came during this 90-day interim, when she wasn't being tested for COVID. They have to take everything super seriously. So even if they know that I already had COVID, like they still have to check. You know what? I don't know that I would say we're getting fake reports as much as we're getting um, rumors. With tensions running high, the university on high alert. Diego Ramos Bechara, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Diego. Coming up, dozens of homeless Evanstonians shut out of overnight shelters due to the pandemic. Plus, nearly one year since remote learning began, we check in with students to see how Zoom University is treating them. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. freezing temperatures and talks to students who offer tips on surviving the cold. Temperatures in Evanston plummeting last week with wind chills as low as negative 25 degrees. Winter happens, we get snow, we get these really cold snaps, but on the whole, the, the weather is warming in the winter. Postdoctoral fellow Ryan Harp says climate change is making Chicago's coldest months warmer. Winter temperatures are about three degrees higher than they were in 1970. 
but we still get absolutely freezing days. Here's why. This area of extremely cold air that is over the Arctic and it gets trapped up there um, by really, basically really strong winds that kind of keep it enclosed into an area around the Arctic. And every now and again, it'll kind of bubble out and you know hit areas like Chicago. And if you're trying to stay warm for the rest of winter, NU students have some tips. Make sure you stock up on like hot drinks. I personally love hot chocolate, so make sure you have lots of that. Um, wear really warm socks, I think. Layers, that's real important. Um, and also, I'd say like embrace the cold. According to the National Weather Service, or NWS, in extreme cold temperatures like Evanston saw over the weekend, you could be at risk for frostbite in 20 minutes or less. But like, if you're gonna go on a walk with people, like schedule like 10 minutes where you can come inside and defrost. NWS says the best way to protect yourself is to bundle up and cover any exposed skin. From a very frosty Evanston, I'm Talia Kalman, Northwestern News Network. It's been a chilly February so far, but temperatures this week are expected to climb back into the 20s. Speaking of cold weather, this week, a winter storm stretched across the U.S. Snow covering the country all the way from Texas to Illinois. Evanston received more than a foot of snow, causing North Student Center and the university's testing sites to close early on Monday. During these cold winter months, Connections for the Homeless is helping many unhoused people find shelter in Evanston hotels. But there aren't enough beds for everyone. Here's NNN's Joey Savchik. For people who don't have a hotel room, Interfaith Action of Evanston is providing 20 beds for folks here at St. Mark's. That's about half the number they'd be able to shelter during a non-COVID year. And despite their hard work, they've got a wait list with dozens more people hoping to get indoors. Imagine for a moment braving an Evanston winter without a roof over your head. Oh, I'm on this bed now. When I talked to 53-year-old Milton Stanley, he was inside a building lobby, seeking sanctuary from temperatures below freezing. At night, he sleeps on the L train. It's very terrible because you gotta also think about all the people that's on the L sleep, they might have a virus. And with COVID compounding a frigid winter, there are even fewer places to turn for refuge. In normal winters, we would have little two hour warming centers, but people also could go to the library or Barnes and Noble. Now, because of COVID, there are no choices. We see how homeless people are affected here in Evanston. And according to the latest numbers for the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless, there are nearly 80,000 Chicagoans without permanent housing. It's hard to be outside. Time. You have no money, no food, it's very hard. And it's cold right now. Interfaith Action of Evanston and Connections for the Homeless, offering warming centers and emergency overnight shelters. When you see people who you know are not able to get in because we simply don't have room to keep people safe, to keep the this, this six feet distance, so it's very hard. Yeah. Even in the bitter cold, Milton can be found at his post outside Target. It's not all about you guys giving me stuff. I like when guys like you to sit down, stand down, stop and spend time just to talk to me. During the coldest days of a COVID year, a little warmth goes a long way. Joey Safchik, Northwestern News Network. Interfaith Action of Evanston says it needs young, healthy volunteers, since many of its normal volunteers are in vulnerable populations. You can sign up at interfaithactionofevanston.org. Freezing temperatures, snow on the ground, and midterms. All signs winter quarter is in full swing. I take a look at how this quarter is going for students and faculty. Northwestern professors and students, online since March. Some are getting used to virtual classes, but others are not. I'm doing an internship through Chicago Field Studies. Um, and kind of the reason I chose to do that was just that I needed a break from like doing school online. Um, it was kind of hard to come to terms with the fact that like this would be basically like a full year online if I took classes this quarter. Some students and faculty say that they finally adjusted to online learning, but they acknowledge that it's far from an ideal situation. You also tend to kind of get an inkling of just the variety of incredibly stressful situations students are in. Um, from COVID to job loss to um, students 
take international students taking the class from all literally all over the world or it's gone better at least for me because i've gotten more used to it um but i still think it's just i mean it's obviously still very difficult for a lot of people Select classes are offered in person, giving a few students a break from Zoom. Um, I do have one in-person class this quarter, which is dance, but I'm taking that as a fifth class. Um, but it's amazing, and I love actually getting to go in. Um, it like is the highlight of my week because it feels kind of like a semblance of normalcy. But Northwestern recently announcing a majority of spring classes will be online. Students brace for another quarter of Zoom University. I want to like have my major classes in person um, if I can next fall. Um, I've also like thought a little bit about becoming a part time student. But the thing is, like, if it's still online, like, what am I going to do for like the free time that I have? What if I'm like only taking two classes? Students say they hope increasing vaccinations will mean a return to in person learning sooner rather than later. However, that information is still unknown. Since last March, the majority of Northwestern's classes are entirely online, but this quarter, a handful of professors decided to get back to school. Here's NNN's Gabrielle Coriotti. This year, Zoom is a new classroom for so many, but not all. There's nothing like being in a classroom, even as the students in both of my classes are doing a phenomenal job of being engaged on Zoom, um, there's still nothing like being in person. Some students are closing their computers and opening the doors to their classrooms. I definitely feel like I'm more engaged in person. Um, it's kind of hard just to like sit in my room and like do class from there. Classrooms look different than they did a year ago. Now students make a habit of wiping down desks and talking with peers across empty seats. I've just been really impressed by how responsible students are being um, and how careful um, and how excited uh, they are to be in the classroom. In-person classes also give students the option to stay online. I actually lectured from uh, an office in the building so that all students could have the same experience when we're actually going over the material, going through discussions and breakout rooms, and then for a hands-on activity, then I would go downstairs. Professors miss being in the classroom just as much as students. There's just that magic, that like that spark, that interaction between people that's missing um, from in person. So I hope that um, you know we can continue to offer these hybrid classes. And so far, everyone's taking the protocol really seriously. Giving professors and students hope that school can slowly move back to normal. Gabrielle Coriati, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Gabrielle. Coming up, Elizabeth Betts finds joy at Joy e. Noodle on the newest segment of Betts Bites. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless.
March is right around the corner, which means March Madness for college basketball. The Northwestern men are on the outside looking in, but the women have their eyes on postseason hoops. For more on Wildcat Sports, here's NNN's Jack Leto. Thanks, Simone. You're right about the tournament, so let's start on the hardwood with men's basketball. They just lost their 10th game in a row, the most recent heartbreak coming in Piscataway against Rutgers. The Cats were within one possession with about 10.30 to go, but they could not close it out. That's been the unfortunate trend for the Wildcats. Here's head coach Chris Collins on remaining optimistic. We've beaten some really good teams. We've beaten teams in this league. We believe we're a good team. We're just we're just coming up a little short. And like I said, we gotta you gotta play with that little bit of sense of anger, confidence when that time comes. And we gotta make those plays. And and I gotta continue to help the guys. Women's basketball also took a loss to Rutgers in Evanston, but that was only their second loss in the last nine games. The Wildcats are still ranked in the AP Top 25. Jordan Hamilton was a big bright spot for Northwestern in that game. She had 13 points, including three of four shooting from behind the arc. Hamilton and the Cats try to bounce back against Nebraska on Wednesday night. On the Olympic sports scene, Northwestern Wrestling took home an important win on Senior Day against Wisconsin. And as wrestling winds down, spring and postponed fall sports start back up. The top five ranked women's lacrosse team took home a 23-7 win in their opener against Ohio State. And this weekend, we'll get our first look at men's and women's soccer. Plus, volleyball is restarting after a two-week COVID pause. A lot of exciting stuff, Chloe and Simone. It's back to you. It's a sports season like no other, and intramural teams are getting their heads in the game while staying COVID safe. NNN's Michaela Denault has more. Intramural sports teams exercising COVID restrictions, but getting students to participate, a challenge. We've had one or two students kind of participate in all of the tournaments we've run. I think it's just something that they can look forward to, to take their mind off of not only, not only academics, but the pandemic that's going on as well. One day tournaments with events like cornhole and basketball, safe ways to stay active. If I didn't have like the friends that I had here or like stuff going on, you know, I'd just be sitting in my dorm and doing nothing. Participants, masked and distanced, compete in 15 minute game intervals. A lot of clubs are doing is they're doing different time slots. So there's not too many people um, brought together in one area. So, I mean, I think what they did yesterday at Cornhole worked really well. Intramurals are catching the opportunity to create community at Northwestern. It's like I ended up talking to a pair of grad students and I'm like, never would have met them otherwise, you know. Students hope for more outdoor activities in the spring. With especially midterms going on, it was really nice to get like kind of a, a breath of fresh air outside of, you know, the normal hustle and bustle of everyday life and just to be able to relax and, you know, play some cornhole. Having a ball to cure the quarantine blues. Michaela Denault, Northwestern News Network. Ryan Coleman encourages students to join Wednesday night tournaments by registering at Northwestern Recreation's website. In the latest segment of Bets Bites, we're featuring Joy Yi, a student favorite in downtown Evanston. And it ends Elizabeth Betts takes a bite. <laughs> Head down Chicago Ave to find Joy Yi Noodle, a pan-Asian restaurant that takes inspiration from different cultures. They've got everything from Taiwanese bubble teas to South Asian fresh fruit freezes to complement your meal. Joy Yi currently offers indoor dining and takeout. The restaurant has options for everyone. Joy Yi is known for its noodles and bubble teas. So this week's segment features its chicken lo mein with carrots, onions, and scallions. First, the portion size is great. There's a lot to eat and a lot to take home if you can't eat it all in one sitting. Second, it's delicious. The noodles aren't too thick and overpowering. There's just the right amount of chicken and vegetables. Truly a delight. And our guest, in and ins Michaela Denault, tries the chicken and shrimp pad thai. Honestly, it was one of the best pad thai I have. Oh my gosh, so good. Uh, it was like, there's such big quantities too. The mango lychee freeze, excellent. I've got mixed feelings about tapioca pearls, but they are perfect in this drink. I'm pretty glee I went to join me. They definitely have the best spikes, stamp of approval. Elizabeth Betts, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Elizabeth. 
Be sure to follow Elizabeth on Instagram for more Evanston food highlights. Coming up, being an instructor turned Grammy nominee, how one Northwestern professor is making his mark on music. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. holiday plans, and Valentine's Day was no exception. While some ventured out and masked up for dinner or drinks, many opted for home-cooked meals instead. Many Northwestern students celebrated with their significant others or gathered with friends for charcuterie boards and wine and chocolate. Don O'Nally is one of Northwestern's premier professors at the Bean and School of Music, but he's not just a teacher. He's also a six-time Grammy-nominated conductor. And it ends Vanessa Kelson tunes us in. That's an excerpt from Carthage, the Grammy-nominated album for Best Choral Performance. Conductor and Northwestern professor Donald Nally tells in and in about his creative process with his Philadelphia-based choir, The Crossing. I take with me things that I learn from the students at Northwestern to my work with my professional choir, and I take many things from my professional choir, um, and including repertoire, that we've commissioned and I bring it here. The journey doesn't always end at graduation. Sometimes students from Northwestern are invited to join the crossing. It's definitely been uh, a, a growth where um, at the beginning, there were a lot of things that I was asking permission to do. Kevin Vondrak, assistant conductor to Nali and Northwestern class of 2015 says he's grown up under Nali from student to colleague. And nowadays, there are many aspects of our work that are truly collaborative between him and myself. Nally's collaborators sing their praises for his work. Donald is truly an artist um, in the sense that he lives his entire life around his art. I consider Donald to be one of the five best choral conductors in the world. Um, as an artistic visionary, um, he just has incessant energy, constant ideas, just always looking for excellence, always looking for something uh, that we can't quite hear yet. Working with him was a dream. He has very high standards and he has the means to achieve them. But the six Grammy nominations in four years are just icing on the cake. It is not at all why we do what we do, like not in the least. Rather, Nali's biggest goal during the pandemic to get back in a room together and sing. For now, Nali tells his students, listen, because that is your job and your art. Question authority, because no one knows everything. Know what you don't know, and don't do things that you don't want to do. Conducting a legacy of success from Philadelphia to Evanston. Vanessa Kelson, Northwestern News Network. With 25 future commissions in the works, The Crossing is still creating, even during COVID. You can catch their past performances at crossinquire.org. And before we go, we want to remind you to tune in to NNN's second ever morning show. Joey Savchik and Nolan Robinson anchor from Evanston and will bring you everything from campus investigations to cooking tips. You can watch on NNN's Facebook or YouTube page the first week of March. That's all the time we have for tonight. For everyone at NNN, I'm Chloe Cope. And I'm Simone Scott. Good night and thanks for watching.